be with you. And also with you. Our order of service is Matins, uh, beginning on page 219 with the brief celebration of Holy Communion as printed on the scripture insert of the bulletin. This uh, Wednesday is our last midweek Lenten service with Sue Supper at 6. I hope you will join us for that. Next week is Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. We have special services and devotions uh, Wednesday through Saturday evening of Holy Week, as well as Priore uh, devotions from noon till 3 on Good Friday. Um, try to uh, make an extra sacrifice of time in worship during uh, Holy Week as we rehearse the great events of our salvation. On Easter Sunday, we have a 7 a.m. sunrise service followed by Easter breakfast and the uh, festival service will be at 9.15 um, following in some activity, I believe a uh, glory or a hunt uh, for children following that service as well. Uh, are there any other announcements that should be made before we proceed? Karen Share. This being the first Sunday of the month, we have a door offering and that is for uh, cases of human need in our congregation. Ladies' Aid meets this Thursday at what time? Six o'clock? Six o'clock. Very good. All right. All right. Any other? All right. Let us, uh, we may uh, prepare our hearts uh, for the, for worship beginning with the uh, hymn 430 after the bells are rung. May the Lord bless the worship.
afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all the time. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. The epistle, from, from, <clears throat> the epistle is from Philippians chapter 3. If anyone else thinks he has reason, to, <clears throat> reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, of Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law of blameless. But whatever gain I had, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes from through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection, I may share in His suffering, become like Him in His death, but by <clears throat> that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or I am already perfect, but I press on to make it, make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ in Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue was shocked with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the air. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes on weeping, bearing seeds with sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheep with them. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 20th chapter. Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants and went out into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant they also beat and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third. This one they also they wounded and cast out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, 
They said to themselves, This is the heir. Let us kill him, so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Surely not. But he looked directly at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on him at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told his parable against them. But they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere, that they might catch him in something he said, so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Mr. The response reads on page 222. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text is the Old Testament reading, Isaiah 43, appointed for this day. We may sit. I hope that you receive the gray sheet which has the outline of today's message. There are blanks to fill in. Filling in those blanks may help you to retain the message from God's Word this morning. I call your attention to the words of our text, Isaiah 43, verses 16 to 21, printed at the top. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself that they might declare my praise. This is our text. C.S. Lewis observed that one of the devil's tricks is to overwhelm us with every conceivable thing that could go wrong in a situation. My niece had a developmental lag when she was born and my sister fretted and worried until a doctor was able to diagnose the condition which was untreatable but at least my sister knew what to expect you and I have the same difficulty bearing with uncertainty for Satan parades all that could go wrong which we could not would not be able to bear when in fact God has promised that we shall not be tempted past our limit. Someone has written a book entitled The Ordeal of Change, which discusses the problems societies and organizations have in changing times and the anxieties of individuals when they do not know what to expect. In our text today, Isaiah is speaking to Israel of people facing distressing change. Their nation was being destroyed. Their people were being exiled if not actually enslaved. Their temple was being profaned and polluted and their experience of worship and sacrifice was being taken from them for the rest of their lives. Such crushing disasters could cause anyone to despair and lose faith. But God's message through the prophet was that he intended to bring about blessing for them, even out of their tragic circumstances. The prophet speaks first of the exodus, Israel's escape from slavery in Egypt. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. God's destruction of the Egyptian army occurred when they had despaired of their own strength and they escaped into the desert. But Israel did not respond to change well. They acted like children who complained and even threatened to stone Moses at one point. Moses who had done so much for them. And even on Mount Sinai they fell into idol worship and debauchery while waiting for Moses to return with the Ten Commandments. They had trouble realizing that they were better off as free people in the wilderness than as well-fed slaves in Egypt. They did not appreciate that God was doing a new thing, transforming them from base 
servile people into free men and women whose chief work would be to praise the God of their deliverance. Isaiah uses that previous episode in Israel's history to illustrate their present plight. The God who brings them into the barren wilderness can transform that wilderness. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. God's chosen people would continue to be His, even when exiled and scattered. God would bless them in their new home and give them opportunities to glorify Him among the Gentile nations as the prophet and counselor Daniel did, as the famous beautiful Queen Esther did, and others. And then God allowed His people, the faithful remnant, to return and reestablish the temple. And His people never again fell into the sin of gross idolatry. But then God did a new thing. He performed miracles even greater than the ones that had freed Israel from slavery in Egypt. In the appearance of the Son of God among sinners, God worked miracle after miracle, healings, casting out demons, signs, wonders, leading up to the Son's own exodus or departure at Jerusalem. There, in the events of Holy Week, God did a new thing. Israel, whom he had declared a nation of priests, offered up the Son of God as the sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. Willingly did Jesus go to his fate, for he knew that he must die in Jerusalem, but then on the third day rise. He did this to free all people, not just Israel from slavery, not just from the slavery of a hard and frustrating life, but from the slavery to sin and death. This is the new thing that God does in Christ, opening the kingdom of heaven to all believers, expanding the people of God to include men and women of all races and languages and nations. John states in the beginning of his gospel, all that received him received power to become the children of God. They become the people God has formed for himself that they might declare his praise. We are among those people for whom God has done this new thing. Because of this, we know God's plan for us. Jesus declared it plainly. You will have trials in the world, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Thus we need not tremble when times change, even when our earthly departure is at hand. For God makes springs flow, springs of life flow, even in the wilderness of death. To the thief on the cross, Jesus could say, Today you will be with me in paradise. He promises us peace beyond understanding if we let go and let God. And this leads us to declare His praise in two ways. First is the gathering we do today where we praise the Lord in the words of psalms, hymns, prayers, and words of the Spirit as recorded in the books of the holy prophets and apostles who spoke as the Spirit moved them. And second, we praise God when we speak of Him to others. Inviting them to church or Bible class is certainly a part of this. But so is your offer to pray for others or help them in their material needs. And when God blesses you in particular ways, to give Him the glory, to publicly thank God for your long life, for your success. 
successful marriage, for your recovery from illness or protection from danger. These are all parts of being people who declare God's praise. And God uses this to open the eyes of others to the new thing He is doing, changing the meaning of death, which appears to us to be the end of life. God can change it into the beginning of a new and blessed life in the presence of the author of life. God's new thing does not remove the difficulties of life, but it does add hope and meaning to our lives for which we can praise Him each and every day, practicing for that final day when all our praises will be brought to perfection through the grace of our risen Christ. Amen. May that peace of God which surpasses understanding keep your hearts and minds in this true faith to life everlasting. Amen. We may remain standing for the Te Deum Laudamus and that's on page 223. I'm going to ask the organist not to play and we will try this a cappella. Won't that be fun? We praise your God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, and the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continue.
receive the offering, please sign the friendship register of the green pads at the ends of the pew. Church, 
that many more may hear the word of God and come to faith. Heavenly Father, we give praise to you that you have called us to be your people, more than pe your people, your messengers to others. Enable us by the work of your Spirit in our hearts that we may give you praise and thanks in the formal way as we do this day and in the, in the way in which we live our lives in service and concern for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for our nation and our leaders that they may be of God's service for our good. We give praise to you, Holy Father, that you have blessed us with a great nation and with government institutions accountable to the citizens. Make us worthy of this gift, O Lord, as we, as, as we demand the common good of what is right from our leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve our nation in the armed forces. We give thanks to you, Lord, that you have raised up fellow citizens who face hardship and danger for our protection. Bless and keep these, Lord. Deliver them from the temptations of, of the use of the sword, that it may be used only for justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the, for the troubled in heart or mind who are in need of our prayers. Lord, there are many who are in need of your blessing, and we therefore implore you that you would grant grace those in need of special blessings as listed in our bulletin, those we know and name in our hearts whose needs are, are so frightful that they cannot be spoken aloud to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the shunned and those who care for them. Lord, we have many who are in need of healing. We remember Lillian, Billy, Rosemary, Alex, Gage, John, Hilda, Scott, Dave and Robin, Jackie, Gloria, Ruth Ann, Sheila, Bonnie, Linda, <coughs> Gail, Dave, Tia, Nora, Brenda, Jean, John, Linda, Phyllis, David, George, Chuck, Nelvin, Sherry, Sydney, Katie, Brian, John, Joe, Mary, Roger, Sandy, Jeff, James, Linda, Lori. Lord, look upon these with your favor and grant each the healing that is needed of spirit and, and, spirit and soul as well as of body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for those in the family way and those with young children. We ask your blessing, Lord, upon Brian and Sarah, who are due in May, Lexi and White, who are due in June, Anna and Gil, who are due in May, that you would especially strengthen the mothers and that you would enable us to support those who have the care of young children, that they may know the, the importance of this precious work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's give thanks and prayer for special blessings received. We give a special thanks, Lord, for the memory and the many blessings you've given to this congregation through Pearl and Kenny Sell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's ask God's blessing on a particular matter of concern. Lord, there is war and violence in our world, especially in Ukraine, but also in other places. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your spirit of peace, that you would bring violence to an end, that you would enable us, Lord, to promote peace and all that leads to thanks and praise and glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all these for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The communion liturgy is uh, begins is uh, printed on the scripture insert of the bulletin.
Having now heard the word of God, let us prepare to receive the Holy Sacrament by making confession of our sin. We may kneel. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have committed thought and word in me by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God grant you pardon, remission, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. We may stand. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ, your own Son, who is the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, you can take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Amen. Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come out of my room. But say the word in your servant.
to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fail not into sin nor run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governments may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We may sit for the closing hymn, 918.